Today we're talking everything Raptors over the Cavs and look it wasn't as close as it looked on the box score I'm telling you that if you watch the game you know what I'm talking about last year when we went into opening night against the Washington Wizards this was a rudderless team it was confused there was no Kyle Lowry we we're coming out of Tampa most of the players hadn't been to Toronto before people were wearing masks it had a different vibe to it and there was this rookie you know and what was he gonna be and this year's team it feels different last year's team I didn't see a superstar. Last night, I think I spotted one on the Raptors. So let's talk about this win. It's a limited sample size. It's a really small thing, but I think it gave us a glimpse into what we can expect going forward. If you're new around here, my name is Robert. This is Pensari Basketball. Grab your coffee. As always, hit the sub. We're so close to 3,000 subscribers, and let's get to it. Now look, far be it for me to overreact to one game. Yes, it is one game. Darius Garland went out in the first quarter. He got injured, although I think that kind of helped the Cavs, if you're asking me. But I think let's just focus on the Toronto Raptors here because there was a lot to like if you're a Raptor fan. The starting unit looked incredible together for the most part. We'll get into that. I think that the bench will be incredible. Now, I have been on record this channel the entire offseason singing praises of Christian Coloco, Otto Porter. Okay, these are two players that I'm extremely high on, and Otto did not play last night, and I don't know when he's going to suit up. Hamstring injuries can be tricky, but when he does, if you were watching last night, he can give so much in terms of spacing, shooting, creation, just a, a stabilizing force in that second unit that's not Thaddeus Young. Obviously, little limited size. I'm not worried about Thaddeus Young at all, but he didn't look great last night. Juancho Hernan Gomez, honestly, I would like to see him outside the rotation. I have been pretty firm in my opinion that I don't think that he's a very good player, and I would like to see him outside the rotation, but last night, the metrics, the advanced metrics looked horrible, and I think that Juancho Hernan Gomez, the minutes with Juancho and Thaddeus Young were probably the reason why the score was much closer than it really should have been for the Raptors had Chris Boucher and Otto Porter played. Now let's talk about some of the positives. OG Ananobi spent an entire offseason complaining that he didn't have enough creation opportunities with the ball, that he wanted an expanded role with the offense. In the, in the first half, it looked like it was more of same old OG. It looked like it was going to be more of just standing in corners, waiting for Pascal and Scotty and, and Fred to be done with the ball. But then in the second half, we saw a completely different OG offensively. And we're going to get into why I think that happened. But defensively, he was incredible he was incredible he was so active he was dialed in he was focused and yeah donovan mitchell had a great night but i don't think that was mainly because of og to be honest i think a lot of the scoring opportunities came against fred van vliet gary trent jr scotty barnes but i think that og ananobi can be a quarterback for this defense and if all nba defense is on his radar i think he is more than capable of getting it let's talk about pascal siakam 35% usage, man. Now, I am on record saying I do not want Pascal Siakam dominating the ball this way, and I don't think that the metrics are lying to you with his performance last night. Yes, on paper, 23 points, 11 rebounds, looks awesome, and people are going to say he's the player of the game, but four turnovers, uh, four out of eight from the free throw line, there was a lot of ball stopping, a lot of ball hogging, a lot of you know possessions that were just stagnant with him on the court. He was negative one on the court. Now, I know that that number can be a little bit misleading, but just an FYI, Scotty was plus 20 in his minutes, and they played a lot of minutes together, and it just felt like the lineups where Siakam was just kind of dominating the ball and just pounding, pounding, pounding. I mean, it's not like he was shooting like 80% from the field. He shot 45% from the field, 9 for 20. To take 20 shots and generate, somehow generate 23 points, especially when you got to the line eight times, is not efficient offense. I assure you that the usage was well above league average. He is currently ninth. I mean, it's just one game. He's currently ninth in the NBA in usage. I don't want to see that ever again. Precious Achua, honestly, again, another case of a guy that I've been really high on in this channel at times, but 29% usage, again, a little too much Precious Achua trying to do a little bit too much with the ball. Hopefully these two players will stabilize. Talking about the positives, Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr. Now, I made a I made a video on this channel saying the backcourt was a problem. Last night, it was not a problem. Gary Trent Jr., 
incredible shooting. He was really good pre in preseason. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't hold up in the regular season, and it has. Even though he is currently chasing a contract, Gary Trent Jr. seems to have bought in, at least for now, into this role where he's going to do a little bit less dribble, 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 and he's going to be more of an outlet. He hit a big shot down the stretch. He started the game out hitting two threes. I think he was incredibly valuable, and I think he held his own defensively. He wasn't great, obviously. I've been on record saying I think he's the worst defender on this team in the in the in the regular rotation, and I saw nothing last night to suggest that he's not that. But there's a difference between being where he was a couple of years ago and where he is today, which is at least somewhat respectable. Every single team has a weak link on defense. Gary Trent is definitely going to be the Raptors' weak link on defense this year. However, I think that he was more than respectable last night. He competed hard. He limited some of the gambles. There were still a couple of gambles. Of course, Scotty had a couple of gambles. OG had a couple of gambles. Pascal had more than a couple of gambles. But I still think that he was respectable. And on offense, I really liked how little he was dominating the possessions and how much he was just... Um, creating space for others really I think it's really important and and if he's on the bench I think you sense it that you really do need that guy to be the valve uh the release valve at the end of a possession so I think that he was really good um Fred Van Bleet oh man thank you efficient efficient playmaking he had the ball just enough good shooting great shooting percentage I mean look at his true shooting percentage I don't think Fred Van Vliet has ever had this true shooting percentage on a season in his life. So I loved what I saw from Fred Van Vliet. Nothing but praise. Now to what I believe was the player of the game, Scotty Barnes. And quite frankly, he was incredible. He was absolutely incredible. Yes, he got stopped by a lot of foul trouble and some ticky-tack fouls. But man, he currently leads this team in net rating. And he currently, unsurprisingly to me, leads this team in defensive win shares. And it is one game, but man, when you saw it, you saw it. Like I watched Jason Tatum on opening night, and I said, Jason Tatum has taken another step from last year. And it was just obvious to me when Jason Tatum was on the court and James Harden was on the court that there was a gap. It was, it was not a huge gap, but it was a gap where I'm like, this guy is a superstar. Like, the way that he is impacting the game, it feels like if he's on the court, they can't lose. And that's how I feel when Luka Doncic is on the court. That's how I feel when prime Kevin Durant was on the court or when LeBron James was on the court. And I gotta be honest, that's how I felt when Scotty Barnes came onto the court in the fourth quarter because he sat out most of the third with that fourth foul. And the minute he came on in the fourth, man, the game completely changed. The complexion changed, everything changed. I'm not surprised that he was plus 20 last night. I think he should have been plus 30. If he'd played more minutes, he probably would have been plus 35. His net rating is incredible. All the analytics pointed to him just being incredible. And of course, you know, if you're a casual fan who's into the counting stats, you're going to say 15 points, seven, seven assists, you know, come on, that's not that big. Obviously, 23 points and 11 rebounds is a much more impressive stat line. But consider the minutes. Consider what he did. I think of a superstar... When I've watched superstars, and I've only seen two superstars in Raptor history, just just so we are clear on how high that bar is. Vince Carter, 2001 to 2003, that to me was a superstar. Kawhi Leonard, for the one year he was here, that was a superstar. There have only been two superstars in Raptor history for me. I don't think, I don't think Chris Bosh was ever that level of player. I don't think DeMar DeRozan was ever that kind of player. I don't think Kyle Lowry was ever that kind of player, and I don't think Pascal Siakam is that kind of player. But last night... What I saw from Scotty Barnes in the fourth quarter, the way that he just blew past Jared Allen, the way that he attacked the defense, he was operating on a completely different wavelength than everyone else on the court. And yeah, I think Donovan Mitchell was similar for the Cavs for the most part. I just think that Scotty was on a completely different level offensively and defensively. Timely plays. It just felt like, look, to me, a superstar how I define a superstar is how do you impact the other nine players? Do the players around you seem to get better when you're on the court? 
right? Do you make other people better? Are you drawing that kind of attention? Are you attacking gaps in a way that other people are just finding it easier to create their offense? Think about what Mike Miller looked like next to LeBron James. Think about how much more efficient certain role players have been playing with superstars, right? That's the that's the superstar effect. And that's why superstars get paid the big bucks. That's why they're always in such high demand. You think about the impact that a Kawhi Leonard had on a Pascal Siakam or a Fred Van Vliet or Norman Powell during that championship run. And it was tremendous because of the impact of his gravity on the court, in the post, in the mid post, in the high post, the way that he controlled the game, it was masterful, right? Because the way that Kawhi Leonard sees the game and the pace at which the game is playing out in his head is slower than everybody else. We always talk about the game slowing down. Kobe Bryant talked about the game slowing down. And I'm telling you, that for Scotty Barnes, the game has slowed down. There were three passes last night, which were just absolutely incredible. And it was like he was operating on a completely different wavelength than everybody else on the court. He was toying with the Cavs defense, and it was just he was picking his spots. And I think that that was really important. So look, I'm not saying that this guy's going to be a superstar this year. I'm just telling you, at some point down the line, the Raptors absolutely have a superstar in Scotty Barnes. I can see it in the way that he's approaching the game. I can see it in the way that the game is slowing down for him. I can see it in his skill development and just in terms of like how tight his handle is from this year, last year, it's a completely different player. And I know that 15 and seven does not inspire superstar level. You know, maybe if he had come out and scored 35 points, people might be feeling very differently about that performance, but I'm telling you, for a guy who pretty much barely handled the ball last night, and he was like, what, 22, 23% usage? I mean, he did everything with the ball. He made others better. He totally got OG going, and that last play was just hilarious. <laughs> Precious Achua dunking it. It was funny. Another player, let's talk about some more players. Let's talk about Christian Coloco. Honestly, I have been on the record saying Christian Coloco is so smart, and it is so interesting to see how Pascal Siakam is now talking up how he doesn't make how he doesn't mis make mistakes and Nick Nurse is talking about his IQ man this guy is rare as a rookie it is impossible for me to think of like five players that I can think of in the last 10 years who came in as big men who had this kind of impact at the rim and I'm telling you if you watch my Christian Coloco video from the summer league I was so impressed back then about his ability to switch out, and I was a little bit concerned about whether that would translate over to the NBA level. It has. Christian Coloco was incredible last night. That contest, that vertical contest on Donovan Mitchell, I don't think you could have walked in expecting him to do that within his first three years. To have a single play like that, to have that pretty much in his first game, that was incredible. Honestly, guys, I think that if you watch last night's game, the Cavs are an incredible team. They're going to have some incredible difficulties, I think, working out the ball usage and responsibilities, ball handling responsibilities between Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. In the very few minutes that Darius Garland played, I think he had a 38% usage. It's incredible. And they're going to have to figure that out because Donovan Mitchell, in my opinion, is a much better player than Darius Garland, and they're going to have to shift away from that. I think there's a lot to be really excited about with this season. There's a lot of NBA observations, I can tell you. The Pistons looked awesome. Like, I was so impressed with that with that trio of Sadiq Bey and Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham. That was so incredible to watch that youth explosion. Jalen Suggs looks like a completely different player. I think he had his best game of his NBA career in his first game. I think that's awesome. He's a friend of Scotty, so, you know, maybe, like, we can root for him now that the whole Suggs-Scotty debate is just completely over now. So that was really cool to watch. I think the Lakers look like a mess. I think the Pelicans could be one of the top two, three teams in the, East, in the Western Conference next year. There's so much to be excited about. Um, I think the Miami Heat are going to struggle. I think the Boston Celtics are going to be a lot better than people give credit for. And I'll be really interested to see the Battle of LA tonight because I'm really looking forward to seeing Kawhi dominate the crap out of the Lakers. So look, this NBA season has started with a bang. I think the Toronto Raptors are going to be over 50 wins. I think by the end of the year, we are really going to be talking about Scotty Barnes being a surefire superstar in the NBA going next season and beyond. I'm seeing signs of it already in the first game. Again, the numbers don't show it, but the advanced ones do. So let me know in the comments below what was your biggest takeaway from the opening night. 
how much do you think Otto Porter and Chris Boucher are going to help that second unit because it really did lag without them. And I think that, you know, hopefully if those starters minutes can go down, it's not encouraging to see Fred VanVleet play so many minutes, have to play so many minutes. But I think that Nick Nurse, as the season goes on, he'll hopefully find a 10 11 man rotation that he can go and he can be comfortable with and hopefully there's a surprise pop like malachi flynn or justin champagne or someone else in that rotation maybe juancho hernan gomez picks it up so i am looking forward to seeing more of the raptors they you know they're going to be facing off against the brooklyn nets and the nets look like a mess on opening night ben simmons kyrie irving just do not look like they're in sync right now ben simmons had a horrible night but I think that the Nets are much better than they than they showed against the Pelicans. And I think the Raptors are going to have their work cut out for them. But you know what? Superstar Scotty, I have a lot of faith that the Raptors are going to pull another one out tomorrow night. Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, hopefully by the time you watch this video, we're at 3,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to a great Raptor year ahead. Peace.